Brookshire Grocery Arena, Shreveport, Louisiana, October 19th. October 19th. And it's going to be Gramlin's Homecoming. What? So we're coming home. We're coming home. To get the groceries. And we're coming. And bringing the groceries. Brookshire Grocery Arena, October 19th. Shreveport, you heard me? One time I was riding Brookshire, I'm that Brookshire. Ratchet City. Ratchet I went to a I went to a midget funeral and uh You can't call them that. You can't say that. You gotta call them little people. Little people funeral. Little person. They didn't have a hearse, they had a PT cruiser, man. I was like <laughs> I'm not laughing because I know they'll get on your ass. They'll yeah. get on your what ass. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga had one power barrel. I was like, <laughs> Just put him on the show like a radio. <laughs> We didn't even have to go around and view the body. They passing this nigga around. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna see it? <laughs> All right, this is too good. This is I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. Yeah, absolutely. One of those ones, man. We got a very special guest in the house with us today. I love when I get to bring like OG comedians through here so they can give us some history and fill in some plot and all of that, man. We got none other than the super hilarious uh, prank calling radio host. Hey, that nigga always <laughs> representing Alabama, none other than Ricky Smiley himself. <laughs> That's just the short version. Roll damn time. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing about that tide, Let's man. Let's go. Hey, they, hey. Now, now they got another football team in Alabama, in Alabama, but right. we're not. We don't never even speak on them. Don't say it. Don't we're say not it. gonna say nothing. It's blasphemy. Cause listen here. Don't do it. I don't know how your name's gonna be a damn tiger and you scream War Eagle. Right. Right. That don't make no damn right. sense. Don't make no sense. Huh? Now roll tide. Damn right. Now that it just makes sense. Toilet paper, washing powder, toilet paper. Exactly. Bro, e I, bro. Exactly. That's it. That's exactly what I'm See, saying. Now, hell. I'll tell you, we started winning once we start, went down there and got some of them colors. Absolutely. Start winning ball games. That's what you got to do. Now, yeah, listen right. here. Now, nobody can talk to them black fellas like Nick Saban. I, I don't you. give a damn. I tell you. Hey, when it comes, listen, in my house, it goes, God. Yeah. Nick Saban, uh -huh. and roll damn tight. Roll damn tight. And then Jesus. And then Jesus. Yeah. But God and Jesus, they're, they're kinfolk, so right. they, they share the number one spot. Nick Saban, they, 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 they should have a whole holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to the 85 South. Glad to be here, man. Man, it's just so Let dope. Let me just say I'm proud of you. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I clap for my damn self. Y'all don't got to clap for me. Don't hey. clap for me. I clap for myself. Man, I was up. I, I, I knew not to get up. I knew not to get on Instagram at three o'clock in the morning. Man, you doing this joke about this white man telling you all this business? Man, that wiped me out. I couldn't go back to sleep. <laughs> I sat up there and did the whole morning show sleepy because of you. Hey, man. And I watched that video about eight times. He said all of them stand with it. And she's staying with us. <laughs> and the cat had two kittens, and, and now the kittens staying with us too. <laughs> Man, I used to work with these old white dudes. They, man, they were some of the funniest guys. Yeah. Just just them being themselves, just, just right. sit back and watch how they talk to each other. That, <laughs> that's crazy. That was nasty. They Because they say shit to each other that black men would never say, Hey, Larry, get your short dick ass over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, that's how man, it was. It was two brothers and they daddy, bro. Old Claudie. Yeah. Old Claudy. I think the first time I saw I worked with you, was that Houston when we did that show with Mike Epps? Probably. I got pictures of it. Yeah. But I think that was us, because Bushwick Bill was there. Yeah. Exactly. And I I felt bad because uh, I had uh, he passed away then. He passed Bobby away. Tell the story. Oh, don't then. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but he's a wild one. He yeah. always he's been showing up at comedy shows. Yeah. And uh fucking the show up because he's a heckler. Right. Well, he was a heckler. Right. Um, I don't, you know comedian Kareem Green out of New York? Yeah. Phenomenal comedian. Shout out to Kareem Green. I was hosting uh, on Old National at Throwbacks. Yeah. Kareem Green 
came in there, like uh, Bushwick was heckling him, tore his ass up. But Bushwick had about 40 niggas with him. Right. They, <laughs> they didn't call me. I'm in New York. They didn't call me like, man, this is a whole, you got to talk to somebody. I was like, what the hell I'm supposed to do? I'm not there. Right. They had to walk him to his car and everything. Man. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, man. Com comedy, comedy is wild. But I, I came up in an era in the in the nineties. But I remember doing that show with you, Mike. It was the first time I saw you perform, man. I was like, man, you good. I think I pulled you to the side. We went in the back. Yeah. I think it was better throwing the football that day. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right backstage. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. So so yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. But to see where you, DC Young Fly, uh, Carlo, uh, Chico. Uh, Chico, where all y'all have came and everything that y'all have done, man. Uh, I just sit back and watch, man, and I'm just really proud of the elevation of comedy. Because, man, we, you know, back when we started, we didn't have social media. You had to try to get in a comedy club to figure out how you was going to get on stage over here. Yeah. I would drive from Birmingham to Atlanta just to do a guest spot. For right. Free and drive all the way back two hours, mm -hmm. you know, back, back, back to Birmingham. See, I came, I caught the last little bit of that. Yeah. Like, a lot of comedians don't have to do that no more. Because yeah. now if they hear your name, they'll just go look up a video or, you know what I'm saying, or something right. like that. But I, I remember having to actually drive. And Ooh. do a guest spot to uh, get uh, a feature spot. 79 Cutlass up in the mountains of West Virginia. <laughs> Cutlass. And that's a very strange place. It, it is. Like from West Virginia. <laughs> At night, it turned into the scariest place you've ever been. I had never been nowhere that is that dark. Yeah. You hardly see any cars out. Right. Everybody live up on these big old hills and they like they be it's creepy. Like it's it's sleepy in hollow the, or something. In the shit. daytime. Absolutely. Little white kid, I was out there pumping gas, little white kid come out there, man, some out of a movie, say, You wanna see my little sister? I said, No. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> yeah, West Virginia is a very strange place. Yeah. Man. Uh, for two hundred and fifty dollars. Damn. Yeah, per night, driving up in the mountain, had three nights, probably made about close to a thousand dollars or something like that. And I remember Driving all the way back to Birmingham by the time you pay for gas and all that, you know, you got, you got one, two fifty left. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But my the good news back then, rent was three hundred thirty-five dollars oh, a month for a two-bedroom apartment. Bring them back. Yeah, bring them back with J the asbestos and all that. Bring all that back. JB Smooth, Corey Holcomb, everybody used to be sleeping, sleeping on the couch over there. Word. Yeah, I used to have. It's a keeper room. Me and Mike Elf. I remember me, Earthquake, and Monique split two hundred fifty dollars one night. Damn. In Atlanta. Driving around an earthquake, uh, white Volkswagen Jetta. I'm not lying. I knew and when he got when he got a bag of crystals, made 250. We split it up, got a bag of crystals, and went back to earthquake apartment to play Coleco Vision. Mm. Why well, I remember Coleco? Because that's what it, yeah. Back in the day. That's crazy. That was the first time I ever went to a strip club with Earthquake. But it'd be so exciting just to chase that money. It don't, yeah. It don't even... Cause they pay you in ones and fives, and you get a knot. It looked like a lot. Yeah. It feel like a lot. And you put the 20 on the outside. <laughs> Absolutely. They made chicks in the strip club or wherever think you got a lot of money. But I play the organ at church, so when I go to the strip club, I would go in there and go to sleep, go in the VIP and take a nap, because I'm not a night person. Mm. You know, I get up early in the morning. So, you know, I would do, do the comedy club, then go all the way back to Birmingham to make the $75 playing the organ at church. Like, <laughs> like my man, right? You know, you know about that, yeah. <laughs> That's what we need to do a church show on here. We'll do a church. We can bring it. We'll have the Sunday service jump Yeah, out. come on. We got oh, all really? the instruments, man. Oh, really? We got a whole ghetto band. We like what the junkyard band. We Let's go. Every, everything. We got a nigga that played the Metric Springs like in no. the Alba band. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know the nigga on the Metric Springs? Like, that right. Was, that was the most Bad intriguing <laughs> instrument to me. This nigga made Metric Springs. <laughs> and he was. Bonk, 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 bonk. That's crazy, man. That's old cartoon, right? Hell yeah. I just that shit was some shocking shit though what happened to Bill Cosby. He taught all the black kids how to read. Yeah. You don't remember picture pages, do you? Yes, the hell I do. Picture I wanted page. that marker. Do you remember that the made song? The sound every time you use it. <laughs> <laughs> this thing it was a joke. You remember the song? Uh-uh. Picture pages, picture pages, go and get your picture page. Time to get your crayons and your pencil. <laughs> Picture pages. Don't sing no more. He'll sue the shit out of him. Do y'all remember that? Anybody remember picture pages? Time to watch Bill Cosby do. She about to crash. She remembers. That's a vivid memory for her. Oh yeah, that was the best day. Damn. Your damn picture pages. And you draw your shit with Bill Cosby on the TV, and you got the same thing he got. And your grandma was sitting up there on the coffee table playing solitaire, smoking a cigarette. Hey, that's crazy. Everybody, grandma was on them cigarettes. Oh yeah, Pal Mal Gold. 
My grandma smoked them Winston. Oh yeah, yeah. My grandma, she switched from Winston's two pal, man. Go. My, my grandma ain't smoked nothing but Winston. And then we'll make you go and light the cigarette for her. I remember buying cigarettes as a kid. Yeah. My grandma wants some Winston 100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you got to go to the stove and light it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how you learn how to pull. And then when you take the cigarette to her lit perfect, she cuss you out. Wait, you better not be no goddamn smoking. <laughs> I'm going to tell your mama. Right. I'm going to beat your ass. Boy, that's crazy, though. Grandmama didn't love them cigarettes. Yeah, hey, I was raised by a grandma. My grandma had a little boyfriend from New Jersey named Mr. Cliff. They would get drunk when she got a Social Security check. They would sit on the porch and drink beer. And Mr. Cliff uh, was real nice. But my grandma used to fuck with him when she'd get drunk. Cuss him out real bad and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, cuss him out. You need to, you need to go home uh, with your funky ass. Yeah, she used to be flexing on him like that, but he told my grandma one day, man, I laughed so hard through that screen. He said, you don't smell like a damn parish your goddamn self. <laughs> and I laughed through that damn screen, man. And my grandma was mad at me, but Mr. Cliff. I was grown before I realized these old men was my grandma's boyfriend. Oh, yeah. I don't feel like you really from the South if you ain't never gone fishing with your grandma and an old man who been liking us since back in the day. Right. He drive around, he pick her up, take her to cash her social security Sit on the porch. Check. Yeah. We ain't even know. I ain't even know till I was grown. Like, that's what they was doing. Yeah. Yeah, man, sitting on the porch, smoking cigarette, talking shit, arguing. Mm -hmm. They always come around the first of the month when everybody get their social security check. Yep, the yep. army checks hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the army, then the social security hit <laughs> right. back to back. Right. They be coming over there trying to take it to the casino. My grandma used to go to Alabama to the dog track, though. Oh, yeah. That's in Greenville, Alabama, something like that. Like going past Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 I used to go to that dog track. For, and they up in Memphis, too. Southland Greyhound Park. I was like, yeah. they really was in there gambling off dog races. So, oh, did y'all ever come up to the, uh, the foot wash? My daddy went to that shit. Yeah. I ain't no go. That's some shit that right was there. some of the most amazing <laughs> shit he ever seen in his life. Yeah. Yeah, anybody know what the foot wash is? Tell everybody. Now look, when you get there, they, hey, they gonna wash your feet. Yeah, <laughs> big ass cow patch with cow shit this high, and black people out there frying fish, barbecuing, and getting drunk, and cussing, all that shit. So, that's yeah. the best. That's the best black experience you could ever. Yeah, have. yeah, that's how. That's how you end up doing comedy, man. You grow up with all those experiences. You have to, cause somebody has to be like be the historian to mark the moments. Right. So when you go, we go on stage and then we we show them these characters. That's why they be so relatable because everybody know these. Yeah. You know these old people who cuss at church, or you might see Sister Johnson smoking in the parking lot before she come in there. Yeah. Like that's that's the, the all type the pastors. Of, yeah, and all the pastors. Yeah. He used to catch the pastor coming out the liquor store all the time. Right. And he would always say, Ah, you caught me. <laughs> come on, I'm gonna work that liquor store. And every time we'll see him, ah, you got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> but God is good. Exactly. He always had that bar up on the arm like this. Ah, you got me. <laughs> I got I to gotta ask you, though, what is it like performing uh, with a younger demographic? Because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm older now. You know, my fans still come up. My fans have aged with me. What is it like when y'all on tour of 85 South? Because, you know, my daughters and stuff love y'all and love everything y'all doing. What is that like? I feel like that's what's really missing from our generation of comedy. I, don't, I still don't feel like we performing in front of our peers yet. You really? get what I'm saying? Because comedy club audiences, they like, they ain't really like right there. They all my audiences like a little bit older than me. Half of it probably be like late 30s. Yeah. Yeah. I still ain't, I still haven't had a crowd of people from my generation. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't have a crowd full of just straight 41-year-olds. Right. So I feel like once once that happens, then it'll really be a shift in the comedy. Okay. Because we still ain't got to talk about the shit that we grew up doing. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So I'm waiting on that moment. Yeah. Yeah, comedy has has uh, evolved over the years. Uh, but I've, I've been having a good time. Like, I do my comedy shows during the week now. Yeah. You know, uh, do a 7 o'clock show, four days. Uh, I don't really perform on weekends in comedy clubs. I do theaters. You act like because you ain't rich as hell. Huh? Man, yeah, you got rich. all I wish damn I, money, man. You go I to work every day. Look at y'all. Y'all got this big ass. This is no, nobody, ain't no fucking look at us. Ain't no look at us. That wall ain't even. 
Look at this. Look at them crooked pictures. Yeah, yeah. We still struggling. Whatever. Y'all trying to make it look like that. I like to late every got month. A whole, had a whole security guard to meet me in the parking lot and walk me in. Had a whole escort to go around the whole building. He ain't even security. Got somebody really dropping flowers like on coming to America. Who just bigger than everybody. Yeah. yeah. You What's that? What? Two jobs when you work here. You can't just do one thing. You, you the cameraman slash security. Man, please. Y'all ass selling out arenas everywhere. Man, please. I'm, I'm still an uh, opening act. Oh, it's cut it Opening up for Martin. You was selling out arenas in 93. What the fuck are you talking about? Now, you do get on. You, now, I was going to ask you about this. You do go out. And sometimes you just you'll jump up, pop out on the tour with a with a Samoa or a Mike or mm -hmm. or Martin. Like, what is it like to still get that? Hey, what's up, it's your man Carlos Miller here, the eighty five South Show live on Prize Picks right now, telling you to use the code eighty five South, get fifty dollars deposited into your Prize Picks accounts just for using the code and picking your five dollar picks. Oh. Use the code. You feel me? So I go just see. got it. All right, see. No cap. Just got 85 it. South Show. Prize picks. We on there right now. Yeah. Got me a good little $5 pick, too. Come on. Yeah. I put it together right here, man. I went to, you know, I dubbed, jumped in the MLB, WNBA. Look, it's Came easy. back. Look, all you got to do is pick the over, under, more Shit. or less, yards receiving, all of that. What you think, Zeke? Multiple sports, hockey, WNBA, right. NBA, college football, NFL football. You can bet on... Whatever. It's not even necessarily a bet. It's picks. You picking. Man, who you got? I'm already locked in, man. You know, I'm I got locked some, in. I got some MLB picks going, man. My boy be showing up. Who? Shohei. Otani. Oh, that's how you... I don't know how that's how you say it, but that's how I say it. He be coming through, man. Who you got over there? Give me something. I'm trying to win, man. I'm, I'm you know, I'm even love and admiration from your peers where they can call and say, man, Rick, come rock with me for two. I know you don't do yeah. weekend. Come rock with me right quick. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'll go out. It, it just depends on what it is. I'm just at an age now where I can just say, hey, that's that, that's a good look. That look like it's going to be a lot of fun. I go, so I do it now for the fun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, that night we were in Houston, I think it was me, you, Mike Epps, you know, Chico. DC. Uh, D yeah, DC, man. That, that was a fun night. Cause we was in the we was backstage throwing a football. Absolutely, you know, having a good time, man. Ghetto boys showed up, you know. H Town showed up. Um, they always show uh, much love. Oh you know. man, yeah. Houston gonna come out. Uh, Houston gonna come out. Chicago gonna always come out. Columbus, I like how South Chicago Carolina. do it. They make it like an event. You get what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. They go out and have dinner. You, oh, you yeah. dress like your lady. You can put that shit on. And them, Detroit, like, yeah, Detroit, and too. Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. They, they be there early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, uh, it's just been a, you know, been a blessing, man, because I grew up in the comedy game, uh, Earthquake. It was, it was Earthquake. I probably, uh... Hit the, we got motion lights. Yeah. You feel me? It threw me off in the dressing room. I said, ah! When I if moved you, the camera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got to move the sensor or something. Right, right. right. Yeah, uh, uh, man, back when we was, you know, back there grinding and auditioning to get on Showtime at the Apollo. Got on the Apollo one time and got booed. Damn. But they edited the booze out and put in laugh tracks. And then a standing ovation at the end when I know I came back to Birmingham knowing that I got booed. So I didn't tell nobody I was going to be on Showtime at the Apollo. Damn. And that it was came, be one of the tough crowd. Yeah, because I wasn't. I was on as a special guest. Mm. I went on uh, amateur night. Went on as went on as a special guest, man. And uh, but when it aired, standing ovation, phone started ringing. Started doing colleges all over the country. I remember uh, Dion Cole. You know, he got a new uh, special out on Netflix. Yeah, that's funny. Funny as hell. Yeah, uh, I got one coming. Uh, I haven't done one in twelve years. You doing a Netflix joint? Uh, I think so. Oh hey. uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's funny. It's, it's your kind of comedy. I believe it. Cause I, I think uh, me, you, comedian JJ, that's that Alabama, Mississippi. Absolutely. We got a, a certain kind of a certain twist to our comedy. I see a lot of similarities that I like. I remember when uh, JJ, I used to uh, help him out when he first started. JJ was valeting cars at the Marriott Marquis mm -hmm. back in the day. And I used to go up there and get him and say, hey man, that's, you know, I said, I got a gig for you. You want to come do this show right here? And I just remember, you know, watching, watching them start. Uh, but we studied under Steve, you know. Now let me tell you this before you move on. Yeah. Let me tell you how small the world is. Mm -hmm. Comedian JJ, JJ from the SIP, 
Yeah. Him and my dad was big partners when he was working down in Buckhead, valet in the car. Really? My pops used to stay on Old National. Right. So I didn't know that they knew each other mm -hmm. like they do. Right. But one night, JJ was at my spot, mm -hmm. and my dad was there, and he was like, you know my son? And they were like, hey, that's your son? It was the what? craziest moment, bro. Yeah. I like, never knew that. One of the one, one of the nicest guys ever, man. You know, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I watched all them comedians, man. That that a lot of them passed away. Uh, uh, I used to take them all on the road. Tyler, uh, Dirty South, Bernard, Tyler, Craig, one of the funniest human yeah. beings, hilarious, ever seen in my life, man. Yeah, I used to take old jokes that I wasn't using no more when he first started out, and I would give it to him. I said, man, just do that on stage and use it. You know, to build your confidence up <clears throat> or whatever, man. And, and we was, you know, we was always tight, man. And I, I just remember helping those guys, Shorty, Shorty. I remember all of them starting out. Used to do out. five, five, nine up here. Oh hell yeah, yeah. They they would boo you, but they they didn't they didn't boo little, that night. I did little Daryl. Mm. I did, every drug dealer and stripper in Atlanta was in five, five, nine one night. And uh, Bruce Bruce had on an orange shirt. I'll never forget. He was hosting. So Bruce Bruce just said, hey, just do five minutes. If you can survive five minutes, you get paid or whatever. Because back then, the drug dealers, they, they rattle their keys. Mm -hmm. If you ain't funny, they start rattling the keys at you. Oh, that's a very humbling experience. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen it happen. It never <clears throat> yeah. happened to me, but yeah. I've seen it happen. Yeah. And uh, and uh, they was about to start rattling the keys, and I put them glasses on, and I start doing little Daryl. And I just saw Bruce Bruce sitting on the orange shirt uh, and with that orange shirt on, laughing his ass off. Right. And that was all I could see through those glasses because they weren't real glass. They were magnifying glasses, cut into some big ass frames. Mm. Yeah. So to make the eyes look real big. Yeah. <laughs> now see, that's that's what be funny about characters like that because like that shit be so spot on. It ain't no way you can make that. Yeah. Man, them drug dealers was spitting out drinks. Man, they were laughing so hard, and I I did it. And it worked, got, got my money, got on out of there. Mm. Yeah. When was the first time you put that character on TV? Oh, man. I did it on uh, Comic View one night. Uh, Mike Epps was on that episode. I'll never forget it. Mike Epps had on a uh, Dallas Cowboy jersey. Mike Epps was like, the crowd had been there all day. He said, man, just do your thing, man, you know, or whatever. He said, the crowd kind of, or whatever. But I had a comedy club in Birmingham called The Cobblestone. Mm. So <laughs> I was on stage every weekend. You know, so if you're on stage every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday doing stronger, two shows, stronger, yeah. your timing, it, just, it ain't that you're funnier than nobody else. You just have good timing. Like, like your pastor been preaching. You can tell when your pastor come back to church and he been doing revival all week, his timing, that word be like clicking. I tell people all the time, pastors ain't nothing but comedians with different oh. kind of jokes. They think I'm crazy. Yeah, especially. Like I do my show Saturday night. He do his show Sunday morning. Yeah, it's the same technique. Just come on, man. I, I, I be pulling pastors aside, just critiquing them. I say, hey, man, if you would have stopped right there and set the doors of the church open, 12 people would have joined, but you kept going. You got to know when the exit stage left. You know, because I, I wish I could be a coach for comedians because, uh, you know, I see comedians make make mistakes. They just don't know. They're just doing the best they can, and it feel good to them. But some people don't know. So, I right, thank y'all. Good night. You so know. The best thing you could do is just let them do it. Huh? Sometimes you can't fix it. Oh yeah, yeah. it just got to be the rep. Like you said, you got to yeah. keep going up there until you got to fail until you succeed. Yeah, that's the yeah. hardest thing about comedy to me. Right, is that that shit can happen to anybody at any mm -hmm. given time. Yeah, but wouldn't it be good if you had a good coach, somebody on the side with some experience that, like, I tell you what, the white dudes back in the back in the late eighties and the nineties, they would pull you to the side and coach and critique and teach and develop you, mm -hmm. right? That's how I got good. Uh, between Steve, George Wallace, Carl Strong, <clears throat> they would always pull you to the side. And when they talk to you, you better take your pen and some paper out. Because back then, comedians weren't trying to help nobody. They didn't because they didn't have to. They making their money. And you would write down all those notes, and then the next show you do, you try to make those corrections. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to learn, like you never tell a joke after the headliner. Headliner go off, say, hey, thank y'all for coming out, do the announcements, good night, boom, boom, boom. You had to learn all that stuff. You didn't know. You think you're supposed to go back up and be funny again after the headliner. You just didn't know. And I had to learn all that stuff. Uh, but uh, Steve was one of my best best teachers, George Wallace, uh, Carl Strong, all those guys. And you would see them on Showtime at the Apollo because that was the first outlet 
Apollo and Comic View when D.L. Hughley was the host. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, it, it was fun back then. You was getting that little money, but it was fun. Riding around, and it was no pressure because you were just the opener. You know what I'm saying? It's pressure now because they paid to see you. Yeah. So now you can come on stage, you better bring it. You got to. Yeah. You got to. <laughs> but that's that rush, though. That rush of just knowing, hey, they came to see this. Yeah. This is what they wanted. But it put butterflies in your ass. Now you it, it will. It you will. Said, boy. I, I think the best shows is like, you know how as comedians and performers, we put so much pressure on ourselves to come up with new shit all the time. Right. And then you'll be rocking your new hour. You'll be 30 minutes into it. Then they just start throwing out jokes they want to hear. You'll be like, yeah. Oh, y'all really fuck with me. Like, yeah. Y'all gonna pay me to do these jokes that you be surprised. You, fuck the new shit. They be like, fuck the new shit. Then then they like some shit that you really just like on your on the bottom of your joke list. Right. They're like a joke that you uh, you know, as a two to you, but it's everything to them. It's the performance. You know, yeah. Sometimes people just want to pay to see what they already love. They right. want to hear you say it or see you do it. I remember the most nervous I got, uh, we did the, uh, what is it? The uh, It used to be, you know where the Hawks play? The Phillips Arena? It used to be the Phillips. The Omni? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, not the Hawks. The Hawks? The no, the Hawks. Man, down there, Rollins was on the Martin Lawrence tour. And uh, Donnell Rollins had a COVID joke that he did, and it ripped the audience up. 12,000 people had got a standing ovation, and guess who dumbass was sitting on the side of the stage laughing, enjoying his show, and forgot I was next? Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. And all the comedians backstage were looking at me like, what you gonna do? And I have a playbook, you know what I'm saying? Because I took everything, everything go back to football. And I have like, like six different sets. And I went through there, I was like, nah, that ain't good, that ain't good. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this one. I pulled it out, my role manager went and <laughs> put it at the foot of the stage, just so I could have some cliff notes. And I went up there and, uh, you know, but that's just to talk about the professionalism and the preparation of your sets when you get in a situation. Cause yeah. what if you, hey, we need you to do a clean show, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that, you got something, but that's just me. Yeah, you gotta be ready to improv. Yeah, real structure. Anything might happen in the crowd. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. You might have to take something out. You might have to leave something out. Yeah. And uh, another thing that's been working for me, man, is audience participation. Like, I was going to ask you, though. You made uh, your show very interactive. And yeah. And like, that gives the, it gives the crowd a certain kind of access to you. What made you start in, like, implementing that? You know, I've been doing karaoke for years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, there were some legendary shows at the start of At the start of Wow, shit. And my co-host is Chris. You know, exactly. Chris. That's somebody you should have on, have on, man. Now, he'll be funny. He's funny as hell. <laughs> it's hard to keep his attention, but, but he'll be Oh, funny. he talks shit. Yeah, he talk a whole lot of it. But yeah, man, um, doing karaoke, man, that's a whole lot of fun, man. Audience participation. It helps you with your comedic timing. It helps you with your music. You know, so now, you know, I walk away from karaoke with something like uh, that I can actually do on stage on the weekend. Right. So it help you develop your material and all that kind of stuff, man. But, uh, and then you do jokes in between the acts. So every time I do karaoke here in Atlanta at the city winery, tickets be gone in five minutes. That just, I just do it for fun. Yeah. It's always dope to do something outside of comedy that involves a microphone. Yeah. I used to host a lot of like amateur nights and yeah. strip nights and Performing uh, in folks' living room. I used to host the camel toe contest. What the hell is that? Hey, who the best camel toe win? McDonald's sign <laughs> up, sign <laughs> down. Yeah, the baby butt. Camel toe contest. Camel toe what? contest. How, how how do you win a camel toe? What is, what the best had, camel toe look you like? I had the best one. What, but what the best camel toe look like? It, it depends. Can on the what camel toe be too big? Yes. One girl can her camel toe like a six by nine. Oh what? Six by nine. Got a big pioneer down there. Two boxing gloves? Man. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> and y'all roast them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, you just a host amateur night. You'll see ladies who ain't even got no clothes. They'll just get up there in their panties and bra. But you just gonna come with the lint balls all on the back of your drawers, huh? Damn. And we supposed to give you this money. Next time y'all have a camel toe night, let me know. Hey, but we, they probably didn't outlaw shit like that now. You, uh, you too freaky. They, they locking people up for that. Camel toe, like, what, what the hell? Hey, this was a legendary run we had in Atlanta. Damn. It was just, you know, at the strip club, they're always looking for something that'll right. get attention, that'll make people come. Right. 
Yeah. Man, man, but I'm just, I'm more excited about my book, man. Uh, you know, my son's a big fan, uh, was a big fan of y'all work, and uh, my son was a stand-up comedian as well. Absolutely. He had just started, uh, started headlining. Uh, we lost him about a year and a half ago. He absolutely loved y'all and admired y'all. I know, he he's real close friends with my baby mother. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they did some shows together okay. and shit. Yeah. My baby mama. Yeah. Was she a comedian? Absolutely. Who? You think I would tell these people? Oh, okay. Oh, damn. What the fuck? I didn't know. Who you working for? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> my gonna, man. We're going to get in the mic. We got him. We got him. <laughs> yeah, we, you, no, I thought, I thought you had already. I, I had no idea. No, we don't. Well, yeah. No, nah, man, he um, uh, absolutely loved y'all. He was uh, funny. And uh, so that's why I wrote, wrote this book. This is your copy right here. Okay. And uh, it's called Sideshow. Uh, it's on grief. If you ever went through grief. I'm still going through it. Really? Absolutely. Who you lost? My mama. When? Shit, 2013. Sorry to hear New it. Year's Eve. Sorry 2013. 12, 31, 13. Really? Oh, shit ain't been the same since. Oh, man. I, I can't. I can't even say I know how you feel because my mom's, you know, still living. Oh man, it's 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 some crazy, bro. It's it's a different kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about every, it. Changed everything. Home don't feel like home. Right. It's just like, damn. Was that? It make you feel like you tripping. Like, was that even real? Right. Yeah. I, I look. Halloween allows us to have fun with our fears, but not all of them involve zombies and ghosts. Therapy can be an effective way to confront and overcome the fears that hold us back. After all, the scariest thing might just be avoiding those fears and letting them limit us. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash 85south Today, to get 10% off your first month, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash 85 South. Uh-oh. October 26. 26. Going Greenville. Greenville, South Carolina. Know what's happening. Yeah, Greenville. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Get your green together in the Ville to come see us it's on South October 26. No South care. Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina. October 26. <laughs> 85 South Show. D.C. Young Fly. Huh? Carlos Miller. Yeah, who? The one with the braids and the ball on the side. You did. You did. We come. <laughs> Get your tickets. No cap. You did. Get there early, because if we run out of seats, you're going to have to sit on Chico Head. <laughs> That's a lot of room, though. We can yeah. sell some more tickets. Yeah, hey, man, fuck both of y'all. All right, fuck it. But get your tickets. Fuck it. Tell me, Chico. Who? Jangles Arena. Yes, sir. DC Young Fly has ADD. What? And we come oh, to CLT. ADD to CLT Sharp. We told you before. No, we're telling hey. you again. Boot jangles are great. Twenty seven tickets, tickets, sucker. But I, I, I tell you, man, this, this, uh, this book is a great tool, man, to help you out. It has uh, a lot of tools in there that you can use because, you know, just because your mom passed away in two thousand thirteen, it don't mean that you you'll never get over it, never or, or whatever. But uh, it's some tools in here that'll really help you out. With your grief process, absolutely. And uh, I'm gonna check it out. Uh, it's a bestseller on Amazon. Come on now, hey! Uh, five star. Thank y'all. But thank y'all. Kirk Franklin on the cover. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Ply. Kirk Franklin looks like Ply. I probably look more. I don't know who the hell I look like. Uh, but it's a it's a great book, man. Telling my story, how you know I lost my son, how I had to man up. A lot of us men, man, uh, Carlos, we don't cry. We hold it in, we try to be strong, we try to go on with our life uh, or whatever, man, and uh, it's really actually not good for you, man. You have to, you have to release, you know, crying. is like letting us, popping the steam cap off of a pressure cooker. Yeah. You know, and going to get therapy. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get black men to start going and get help because all of us, uh, you, you know, death is a part of life. Mm -hmm. We're going to either... Lose somebody, or we going we gonna die ourselves. But we roll our ankle, we go to the doctor. But we don't go to the doctor for our mind and our brain. And it's a lot of your fans out here who done lost a mom, sister, a brother, or whatever, going through the grief process. And uh, this book, man, is gonna help you get you closer to God. It's gonna encourage you to go to therapy. 
and it's going to let you look for, um, it's going to give you some little, you know, uh, helpful tools where uh, when the cloud is gray, the beams of light that's coming through the cloud that we can't see because we're so focused on the dark cloud. Mm. But God just sent so many angels, and we got to always remember what our loved ones would want us to do. My son would want me to be on this show with you, sitting here talking to y'all about funny stuff and about comedy because that's what he was. That's mm -hmm. what he became. I, I had my son on stage telling jokes at seven years old. Absolutely. You know, up on stage at the comedy club and, uh, you know, had him opening shows when I was doing shows, that, you know, uh, downtown Atlanta. And I would just put him up on stage, write his little jokes for him and let him go up on there and perform. He grew up and became a professional comic in a headline. That's dope. So uh, you can go to Amazon or rickysmiley.com. Get this book for your mom because your demographic, uh, I'm sure your mom probably lost her mom or your dad lost his now, mom. Now, my mom was a big fan. I'm sure. Huge fan. I'm of sure. She used to love all your prank calls. Really? Her favorite one was Blue Got the Ashes. The blue Got the Ashes. My toes. <laughs> my uh, toes fell off. <laughs> when I called the funeral home. She would call and just, just be like, y'all just say, hello? <laughs> who, who, who got the ashes? Who got the ashes? That was one of her favorites, man. Yeah, that, 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 that was that. red. Yeah. Oh, my God. New Numeric message. Yeah. Numeric, <laughs> numeric. <laughs> Do you know I had six volumes? I had six. Oh, she had every one. Six volumes of prank phone calls. I, I had an office in Birmingham, and uh, we would mail those uh, prank phone calls, CDs out to folks all over the country, man. They, well, I'm ready to come down there. I'm ready to whoop some ass. <laughs> My ass going to get whooped. <laughs> How big a boy are you? Uh, <laughs> and the, uh, the other favorite one was uh, when you called Krispy Kreme, say you want to get the greens done. Oh, I did that at uh, V103. I was on Frank Ski Morning Show. And uh, I called that Krispy Kreme right there on punts uh, <laughs> before it burned down. Is it back open? I heard it. They rebuilt it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That old Krispy Kreme, I called down there and did that prank phone call. Played it on V103. And my shows, all of my shows at Uptown sold out. Like, I did five shows in one day. My greens ain't nasty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How you remember all that? Man, I, this, I'm telling you, she was... <laughs> She was on it, man. Really? She used to love your prank call. And that's why, that's why even after my son's death, man, I go out here and perform, man, because, man, people be sick, man. People had, other people have had losses also. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Too much is given, much is required. You know, I came to Jackson, Mississippi and did a show the night I buried my granddad. Mm. Because it's like, do you want to just sit around the house and think about all, that, all of that? Or you want to go to Jackson, Mississippi and do a show? Because now I got on stage, people got cancer, people on dialysis, people got oxygen tank. And it's like uh, you have to do it for the people because that night was probably going to be the last biggest thing some of those people were going to be able to do. Yep. So, man, sometimes as artists, we have to make sacrifices even in, I'm sure you done cried before you went on stage. I'm sure you done cried. I had a show the same time. I, had a show. I was on my way to a show when they called and told me my mom was New Year's Eve. What? Yeah. I was on my way to headline. Did two hours, brought the new year in, standing O. Then had to go deal with that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's how it be. I got a call to my grandma died when I was being introduced to go on 106 in part. Got a call that my granddad died when Martin was introducing me to go on stage in New Orleans. Mm. And I got a call to my son that I was sitting in an apartment in Dallas by myself. And I had to call all my kids and give them specific directions as to what to do and what happened before they heard it from anybody else. Meet me in Birmingham, and I'm packing a backpack, trying to get to the airport to get on the plane after I find out uh, my son. That was my oldest son. Mm -hmm. And um, that, I, I wrote about all of that stuff. It's a real touching book. It ain't just about me. It's just going to uplift and help. I hope uh, I have a copy for... Uh, for Carl, um, uh, 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 Chico, because Chico and I, we have a lot of conversation about uh, his mom's passing yeah. as well. And I'm talking about we done had some deep, long conversations, you know, about that or whatever. It, it'll be a helpful book for all y'all. Yeah, this is the type of, but see, like, on the other side of that, that's what keep me going creatively, though. It's, yeah. just, it's knowing that, like you say, it's people out there who using us to get through stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who need that laugh. Yep. Who ain't had that laugh since such and such past or since that surgery or that accident. Right. Or that, you know what I mean? We be helping people through a lot of shit, too. And guess why I named the book Sideshow? 
Remember that song your mom used to listen to? Let the side show begin. Hurry, hurry, step right on in. Yeah, that's that. Can't afford to pass it by, but guaranteed to make you cry. This, this, this book is about you going on stage, performing, doing your show, knowing what you're going through and how you're feeling on the inside. Right. And that's what the song is about, side show, about a sad clown right. who's performing in the circus. Making Most clowns are. Absolutely. Most that's what they don't know. They say comedians are the best at hiding pain and stuff like that. Because yeah. We can laugh through it. Right. Right. So I hope you enjoy that. Most definitely. And I have I have one for y'all. And uh man, y'all can follow me on on uh Instagram, Rickysmiley.com or mm -hmm. Rick Smiley official on TikTok. I make some some wonderful videos, but it's some great chapters in there. Double for your trouble. Uh, the insult to the injury. You're going to be able to relate everything in this book because you're a comic. Most definitely. You know, so, so man, I just... Let me see. I got about four more questions. Come on. Let me see. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Let me see. I ain't got nothing but time. Let me and, see. And I, I don't care how late I stay. I'm going to get my ass up and go to work. Yeah, morning. I heard you. It don't bother me. Long clock. Never. That's crazy. No. That, 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 you, that I is, saw the clip. You were pretty well. I don't use no alarm clock. I said, man, get your ass out. <laughs> Never just saying anything because, on these podcasts. Yeah, cause get, and then I, people got mad at me about it. But the thing about it is I really don't. You know, my, you know, I, I raised by my granddad, man. My granddaddy trained us, man. If you got something to do, you can go to bed with your job on your mind. This is what my granddad said. Go to bed with your job on your mind, right? And then your folks say that too. So what if your alarm clock don't go off and you got a radio, something as important as a radio show, and you got a commercial to read at 6 o'clock? Yeah, that was my next question. I was about to ask you about the radio show. Yeah. When the hell you be finding your colorful co-host from? Now, you know, me and Miss Juicy got a, got a love thing going on. Oh, yeah. When I see her, she love me. And Juicy we got love a each other. Juicy got a gospel album coming out called... Yeah, stop, man. <laughs> yeah. Stop, man. I'll pick me up so I can see Jesus. Shut up. Here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you find me Juicy at, man. In Dallas, man, somebody... I, I said, I need a little person. I'm a big Howard Stern fan. Howard Stern had Hank. The shock value. I said, I want a little person on my morning show. And, and some girl was like, I ain't gonna bring... She wouldn't bring her for months. I said, please. She said, you gotta be nice. So don't make fun, so I promise. Man, when she bought, came in the room and bought Juicy, man, I saw Juicy coming down the hall, man, I started jumping up and down. <laughs> she said, what I'm going to do? I said, look, I don't care. Just answer the phone. Just answer the phone. So she started out answering the phone. Juicy. And then she ended up on the baby housewife. I'm sorry, Little Women in Atlanta. I'm about to say the baby housewife. No, I was actually on that show. Little Women in Atlanta? They love me now. Yeah. Them I'm little, talking about y'all all over the world. Them little twins thick, man. <laughs> little J-Lo and them. Them little, them the little, 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 little uh, I call, I call them little wiggle, wiggle twins. <laughs> yeah, the one that look, yeah, the twerking. Yeah, man, I, 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 I hit one of the twins. Don't do that. They, they, don't do that. I went to a, I went to a midget funeral and uh, you can't call them that. You can't say that. You gotta call them little people. Little people funeral. Little person. They didn't have a hearse. They had a PT Cruiser. Man, I was like. <laughs> I'm not laughing because I know they'll get on your ass. They'll yeah. get on your ass. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga had one paw barrel. <laughs> Just put him on the show like a radio. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have to go around and view the body. They passing this nigga around. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see him? <laughs> oh, stop it. Y'all got everybody back laughing. Y'all this, uh, this this dude, he had a he had one of the finest little women I ever seen. Ooh. She was so bad. I'm like talking a little about. mini version of like her. I was, Ooh, they, I was a little jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids, kids be it the uh, little people throw kids off. I had to stop my grandson uh because we had a little person sat next to my grandson at church. And my grandson kept turning around and said, uh-uh, I turned around. And then the pastor said, hey, go in, you know, high five three people, tell them that God is good. And I walked down this way, I was like, God is good, God is good. I looked back, my little grandson was standing in his face. And before I, you know, you have to get your children because they honest. And before I get to my grandson, he asked that man where his mama was at. 
So, you know, like he was another child or something, so I <laughs> put your ass over here. <laughs> Sit your ass down, tell us where your mom at. <laughs> <laughs> I, that song. Am, I am my daddy. Right, right. What's next for you, Rick? Oh man, uh, that that comedy special and just radio, man. I... Hey, November twenty third, New, New Orleans. New Orleans. On, What's now. happening? Well, hey, man, you already know what's going down. New Orleans. Come on. Smoothie King Arena. King. November twenty third. Oh, it's King. going down. Hey, hey, you know hey, what I'm saying? Hey, man. Uh, Smoothie King. Y'all need to step this up. Y'all got no passion for me. Ain't nobody gonna wanna come to y'all show if y'all don't sell it. They're crazy. Come on, matter of fact, do it again. She looks just like you. Start it over. All, all because that's your dog. You gotta do it over. New Orleans. Hey, what's November up? What's up? Third. You already know what it you know is, baby. Hey, your hair's going down, Ward. <laughs> hey, baby, so it's what? crazy, baby. You November twenty third. Smoothie King. Then you already then know. Then get your get your tickets. Yeah, but uh, she's gone now. Get your tickets, man. Yeah, I'm in the low of night, warrior. You hear me? Get your tickets, man. You know what's happening with us? Back to the if you ever want to see a woman who just fine as hell, where we gotta go? Houston. Yes, indeed. Houston. Well, in that case, October 20th, we're gonna see if he's telling the truth, because eight times. Where we're going? It's going down. Going down. We're coming down. Going down. Eight times. Go time. away! It's Splash City. You get your dig. And going listen, down. listen. And going down. down. Just like the light yeah. went out. Going ah! Yeah. I said the light went out. What the fuck is wrong with you? We not on really black, nigga. The light went out. <laughs> Cause you're trying to make this a film. It's going down. We're going to H-Town. It's like going down. Shit. Yeah. In the H-Town. This nigga's trying to blind, nigga. I gotta, I gotta call Slim Thug, Paul Wall, Lil Kiki, Lil Flip. Paul Wall, pull him up. Trey the Truth. And Paul Wall. Hey, we don't even have to call Trey. He just know. Yeah, yeah, he just know. He just Trey know. Be like, yeah, man, we gotta come down, man. Get y'all, man. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> he put it up. Going down to the H-Town, man. Yeah, all right. Hey Sam, no cap. October twentieth, Energy Arena. Yeah, NRG. That's what we bring in the NRG. Fuck you talking about? Hey is that what this going is? Going down. Yeah, Energy. NRG. We bring in the Energy. Hey Sam, October twentieth. It's going down. We coming down. I'm coming down. down. I'm in a slam. You did. Hey Sam. Eighty fours and bows. October twentieth. Get your tickets. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. It's your boy DC on fly. Look, and we doing our part to save the titties in the building. Look, we got a special colorway. Of our merch, our hoodie, jogger set. Yes, sir. If you buy one of these during the month of October, we're going to donate 10% of all the proceeds to breast cancer research. Yes, sir. You know what time it is. Fight the good fight, man. Hey, much love to all the survivors, all the ladies out there battling, Stay still strong. fighting. Stay strong, bro. We're going to do our part to make sure we save the boobies. <laughs> I just do little spot stuff, little television appearances here and there. I try not to work. Work too much, man, because I, I grind hard for like over 30 years, man. Yeah, yeah you know. Big salute, though. Yeah, no, no, thank you. No, man, thank y'all. No, I grind hard for 30 years, man. I don't have nothing else to prove. Sometimes it's okay to step aside and, and let the younger, let you the next generation, and let y'all kill it. And I, I like sitting back watching what y'all doing on my phone, and I just do it when I feel like. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm real, I'm real proud of y'all. I'm proud to be Simone. I'm proud of. Jess, I'm proud of uh, you, Chico, DC, Young Fly. I absolutely love uh, y'all generation and y'all style of comedy or whatever, you know. Uh, but uh, I'm just glad that, and I hope that we played a, a real big part in opening those doors. No, you most definitely you did know. because we the generation that, that got to watch all them comic views. We, we was yeah. kids staying up watching that. When y'all supposed to be in bed. Yeah, but you, man, you hosted a whole bunch of seasons of that, man. Yeah, and that you was the, when uh, they like, first you, brought it to Atlanta. Yeah. You know. Uh, How many seasons did you host the comedy? I did two seasons. I did 2000 and 2004. Then I had another TV show on BET called uh, The Way We Do It. I was doing all those skits and those characters. And Who in the hell left the gate open? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Who Pooed It. Who Pooed It. The Who Pooed It, my little live band yeah. on, uh, on, on Comedy View. But, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a blessing, man, uh, being on the road. I had a great time. And then, you know, when you start getting grandkids like I have, you know, you start kind of like, okay, let me stay at home for the weekend. I want to take my granddaughter swimming and doing little simple stuff, man, you know, out there, you know. So that's why I go do radio Monday through Friday. And sometimes that's enough because you perform for four hours every morning, Monday mm -hmm. through Friday. So the morning show is a lot of fun. And uh, performing here and there, doing spot dates. 
you know, uh, I do. I still do Dish Nation sometimes. You know, I come to Atlanta and do my little TV appearances and and go back go back to Birmingham and just enjoy life. Now you thought this was gonna be an easy interview, Dean. No, man. This... I gotta turn the pressure up on your ass. Where Clayton go? Come on. Where Clayton? Clayton. Oh, you just thought this was gonna be a cakewalk. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got a surprise for your ass. Uh-oh. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. Bring it on. Absolutely. Bring this it. podcast is sponsored in part by people who do hair with no license and cut hair in the kitchen. <laughs> Make sure you stay tuned. It's the number one black show that's not on TV. This that's podcast funny. right here is for everybody who's not good at nothing but math and counting money. It's a valuable skill. Don't let nobody tell you that it ain't. I took special ed math class. You was in special ed for real? No, nah, just for math. I can't do math. Math don't make sense to me. That sounds like some special ed shit, because you going to have me believe you was in special ed but and I, they weren't helping you with none of your other work. But, but I was a <laughs> fool in English, though. <laughs> English and government, reading comprehension. Man, y'all be having a ball on that morning show. What the hell y'all be laughing at? Come up there one morning. Just come it's be too damn early. I had to catch y'all man. in an hour or something. Man, come up there, man. You have... Hell no. You know him? What? No. Oh, my God. You know him? I said, yeah, man, I love this dude I right here, man. I said nigga life about three times. Woo! What a pleasant surprise, man. You, what you doing? What's up? They don't adopt me. I saw that. Congratulations. Yeah. Now that go, Clayton. Ricky, smiley, why you kick Clayton off the tour? Stop. Stop. What tour? Stop it. What's what tour? What's up, man? All right. You good? I'm good, What's man. Good? How you doing, Great, man? man? What's up, man? <laughs> he kicked him off. He kicked you off the tour. man. Oh, man. Come on, man. You can't be kicking what? Clayton what? off the tour, man. What tour? Come on, man. Stop it, man. I ain't that was a while ago. Huh? That was a while ago. What tour? Let's stop. It was your tour. It was your My tour. tour. I kicked you off. Yeah. It was your tour. I said, <laughs> I walked up here. I ain't never walked up to nobody say you off the tour. No, no, you told them people to tell them stop coming. You told the tour did, manager. Did something happen? Was you? What happened? Yeah, you uh. <laughs> Why you doing this? <laughs> no. Hey, what? I'm outside. Cool it. What? No. Oh. Uh, what happened? Yeah, you uh. Because Kevin was on, uh -huh. tour man, it was your tour manager at the time or whatever. Right. So it was a time when you had me, LeVar, Walker, I think Vanessa Fraction, Special K was hosting, sometimes still Delaney pop in. Yeah. And yeah, and you, uh, yeah, you ain't like what I had on, man. <laughs> you told me I had to put some shit on. You, you, said, you said, wear something nice. Just put something nice on. And he I, had I, shit. I ain't had nothing nice. I thought I was doing nice. If you would have told me, I would have bought you I something. No, I didn't want no fucking body car. You sound like Diddy. <laughs> you can't take me shopping. <laughs> See, I, you good. I'd have paid you. You're you the baby you back. Good. You good. You good. Yeah. 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 But it worked out for the best. Everything worked out. Absolutely. Where you supposed to be, where you supposed to be. You just. Yeah. Well, man, congratulations. No. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank you. Congratulations yeah. to you. Hey, man, it worked out. It was good. <laughs> The money wasn't never, I ain't, look, look, it wasn't never no real drama because the money came when it was supposed to come. Right. The money was always right. So, right. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, man, I, I think I, I didn't, it, but it made it I tried, like though. I tried, though. Right. Just, I tried to do what you did. <laughs> I tried to, I, I said, damn, let me get some shit. I said, what he got? <laughs> right. You had some true religions. I got me some true religion. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, said, you said, hey, man, you can't be on here wearing no jeans with rips in them. I said, God damn, man, they can't like it. <laughs> I said that to you. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. You good, though. Yeah. But also, you a different era. Right. You right. was coming fresh off the suited yeah. and booted lots of, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. was, that's your see, era, I, so. See, see what he's oh, talking man. about? I was coming off, because uh, I was opening up for the king. And it was, yeah, you got yeah. it was just a different uh, kind of like. Yeah, comedians was, was getting suited. Absolutely. On the shows, all Absolutely. the stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad it worked out for yeah, you. No, man. no, it, it was, it's always gonna work out. What's yep. for you is for you. It worked out for the best. Hey, I might not have got what I got if I was, you know what right. I'm saying? So right. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. You stupid. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so what? What are they gonna do? Fire you? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't been able to be fired in a minute. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's after that. That's see, always a good thing. If I wouldn't have brought it up, I would have been full of shit. <laughs> Do you see the type of shit they <laughs> asking people on podcasts now? What you mean? They ask us the wildest shit you can think oh, of. No, yeah. yeah. No. 
Yeah, this ain't even. Well, I'm glad you have a man. Uh, uh, oh, that's one of the funniest niggas yeah. in the world, bro. Man. I hadn't seen you perform in a long time. I would love it. Where you performing at, nigga? Man, I'm everywhere. I'm on the road, man. I got to go to Vegas this weekend. See? Nigga, on the road. Yeah, so. I'm out here, man. Man, send me a clip. I want to see. I want to see what you got. Oh man, I got. We, I we got some stuff out there. I it's got your ass bad now. Nah. Got a few little oh, specials. Bad. Yeah, come on. Let's you go. Know. I mean, hey man, like he, like like he was saying, you one of them stables, especially in the South, that made yeah. it so that the South could goddamn do it and pop their shit, and your shit brought people together. So yeah, we always fuck with you for that, man. man thank you, man. Because you cover all the generations. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. Right. You can watch it with your grandma. You can watch it with yeah. And like he said, they gonna quote it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. You know that that's the that's the old people's solution to get on the comedy. Yeah. They always say, hey, you know what you need to do, don't? You? Yeah. You need to get in there with Ricky Smiley. <laughs> hey, you get in there with Ricky Smiley. <laughs> right. I'm telling you now. <laughs> <laughs> they do tell you to get with a bigger comedian. Hey, that's the whole goal. No when when you get with Ricky Smiley, with you. then I know you ain't bullshitting. That's what my grandma told me about Steve. She found out that Steve Harvey was coming to the country because she said, just go up there. Just go up there, introduce yourself, and show him what you got. <laughs> <laughs> like I could just walk up there and do that shit. Right, like they say, hey, who the fuck trying to get on? Right. I brought him on stage. Uh, yes, you did. At Start On. At the Start On. Uh, yep. Uh, he came to Birmingham and put him up on stage. I, I think uh, Dizzy Bates. I told him. It was his first time. When he start, came around, Yeah. I just had to make that nigga take four pistols out of his pockets. <laughs> Wait a minute, for real? Hell yeah. I know ain't nobody. Bro, hey, you can't you know, be on stage with all that shit in your pocket. Life. You know they be after me, bro. <laughs> I, have to, I have to have something. Now I carry a can of pepper spray. Man. You know, cause I, I used to they tell them. eat that? All the time. Take all that. You know, you're going to be a couple, but I have time to get that. Take all that shit out your pocket, man. You can't be out there like that. Now look, you know it wouldn't be right. If we ain't get you some of that goddamn purple and gold. Oh, I know you love that. I know you love that. Oh, yeah. That's purple and old gold, too. You right. Thank you, man. I don't know whether to wear it or frame it, though. Man, go on, set one out, then frame it. You, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I have for it, then frame it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go home. Thank you, man. Thank man, you for this, man. You Appreciate shit, you, bro. Man. You know you always work. Look, we got your yeah, own coat. We got your coat, my boy. Much of this nigga cook, he ain't bring no pinto beans or no dumplings or something in Come on to the house I cook for you one day. Man, we're going over there. I got fish on that lake. Whatever you want to do. We can go fishing on the goddamn lake. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Get them on the and, and you know you're going to have to let us on. with sharks, right? You know you're going to have to let us on that back porch, too, okay. now. You know, oh, yeah. You know we got to oh, get on that back porch. I don't care about that. <laughs> Y'all good. Like Miss Jane got to be there. Most definitely. Jane would definitely Zane be there. Let me get a Sharpie right quick. You got to sign the table, too, bro. You most definitely oh, got to sign the table. You see, we got everybody on here from Snoop Dogg to Beat King to... Everybody, all the people stopped through. Man, it's, a, table, man. it's an honor to be here, man. Got some more books with you. Yeah, I do. Hold up. Sign my book. It's an honor to be recognized. Man, let me just say this, man. Like, in all seriousness, man, I I, I really appreciate y'all. And 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 I appreciate your attitude about stuff because it was times, man, comedians had, uh, back when I started, would correct me and get in my ass about stuff only to, only to make me better, only because they saw yeah. good in me. And in the city here with you now and see everything that you're doing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and if I did anything the wrong way, I wasn't perfect. And I, I might have not did that the wrong way, but man, I got love for you, man. I'm proud of everything that you're doing. Bro, it worked yeah. out the way it's supposed to work out. Yeah. Matter of fact, I don't know what, your first manager used yeah. to, she, she still do stuff with the Universal? Oh, Denise Howard, yeah. That was a while ago. Uh -huh. So I did the Universal, right. and that's how she sold me on working with the Universal. Right. <laughs> she so was it like, led you to yeah. everything. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. Everything go together, man. But, but yeah. one, one thing about, and, and, and Carlos will tell you, and uh, uh, I always been known pulling comics to the side, just trying to yeah. help them, just trying to, because I, I had a comic uh, two weeks ago who was doing the show. I said, remember now, AT, uh, T Mobile might be sitting in the audience. And if you're gonna use that word on stage, that word need to have a joke behind it, or, or they need to be so busy hearing, they need to be so busy laughing that they don't hear that word. Right. 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 It's, a, it's, it's. A, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like <clears throat> your you funny got to outweigh the offense. Right. 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 If you go, exactly. yeah. That's what I told. Yeah. You. I told. It's got to be more funny than it is offended because if it's if it's that, then it's just like you biting an onion. But if yeah. you take that onion and saute it. 
and put it in a skillet and put some Pad, flour and yeah, some water. Pad, it's the yeah. same onion, but you can't taste it. Right. And it's just all about how you do stuff. And that's why I was, we was talking earlier about coaching, man. Back in the day when I started, man, comedians would pull them, especially them white dudes, they would pull your ass to the side and, and they would correct your ass and get in your ass about every little thing. Yeah. That's what I feel like for, for me made me great. You know, I was you would be on the phone for for yeah. a long time. Yeah, I was waiting to say that. You, yeah. know, you looked out for me several ways and several times. <clears throat> you know, I want to give you your flowers while you're right here because just taking it back to when you, you know, you, you mentioned me, you bringing me to uh, start on, that was on some shit. You didn't even have to, like, you put money in my pocket and got me a room that night. Yeah, you didn't have to do that. And you was bringing me there to introduce me to Bruce. Right. And then not only after that, you know, you put me on the road with you, put me on a couple shows, and then you uh, was helped give me a job at the radio station with uh, mm -hmm. uh, with head crack. I don't right. know what happened with all that, but right. you were, I'm talking about emailing and calling. It was like you were damn trying to get the job. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Like you, you've been a, calling me, and you, you first thing you told me was like. If you're trainable and you coachable and you teachable, I can yeah. work with you. If not, you just let me know now. We can hang this damn phone up. But all y'all have always had, everything I remember about you and everybody always had a, a, a good attitude because I'm a student of uh, Kane, the funniest comedian in the country, but I know comedy and I'm a fan though. You yeah. know, I sit up and watch comedy, man. I just freaking love it. And at this age and at this point, man, all I want for all of y'all, man, is just to see y'all doing what you're doing because uh, I just think it's just outstanding. I mean, we appreciate and uh, I'm that, just honored man. to be here that y'all even yeah, thought man. enough of me reaching back, having some of the, I guess I'm considered, when DC called me OG. Absolutely, so, you definitely so, OG, you definitely OG, that, that, that's definitely OG. a term, oh. term of respect. And yeah, I just really, yeah. really appreciate y'all. Yeah. And um, about to get emotional. You know, you're emotional when you suffer the loss and shit, so everything make you cry. I'm probably gonna cry all the way home just to be able to sit here. Cause I've been cry. watching y'all on my phone like every yeah, night. Yeah. And I sit up, man, I be watching y'all, man. I be like, man, look at these young dudes, man, getting it. So watch look at it full circle. Yeah. Me and my grandma used to sit up and watch you yeah. every night yeah. on that comic view. You know what I'm saying? Wow. We used to sit up there and watch that. We go, we gonna watch that. That's one thing she she would, that was our tradition. Right. Yeah. She gonna watch her news, look, look, you know what I'm saying, early, and, and she gonna watch that comic view until she nod off. She don't start nodding off till, till y'all go off. They yeah. ain't even call it yeah. comic view. Turn, turn, make your smile. Yeah. Yep. They called it who was yeah. really who was hosting it. Yeah. Whoever, Whoever was, was on, on there, yeah. really hosting it, that's who they finna, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah man, full circle. Y'all remember the song? Comic view on BT, -E. coming yeah. at you six nights a week. Get, Get your, your laugh on. on. Hey! Or get your laugh on. <laughs> I have a son that in years on it. You told a joke up there one time about this pregnant girl couldn't wait to get outside and the baby was premature or something. <laughs> about the that. baby yeah. that big and you said that she was changing the pamphlet with top paper. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga! I still remember, and that's an old ass joke. You did it a long time the ago. Baby's name was Miracle Brianna. <laughs> that shit was so funny. You said it later with a baby. So premature. Yeah, the baby's so small, he had to change the paper with uh, change the pamphlet with top Paper. She be holding the baby like this. Just like yeah. that, that shit was funny <laughs> as hell. <laughs> oh, nigga, the, my favorite Ricky Smiley joke is about how when your mama just drop you off over your grandma house. Come on, man. Mama need to come get y'all. Put that damn night down and lay your damn eyes <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. I ain't called it. See if you had no clean clothes, said, hey, cat, dog, or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to put yeah. your grandma a nightgown on because yeah. you ain't had no pajamas over there. Man. Come on, bro. Man. Up. Man. Man. Way up here. Man. Way up here. You got to go dive in the you got bed. two box springs. Come on, man. <laughs> you looking right at the seat. <laughs> <laughs> the thick is cold on the And the heat on. 90. Yeah, and the heat go up to the top. Oh, yeah, oh my God. Wait, wait, oh, then, rising. then you had to light the heater. So yeah, you got you had to, to get a paper, a, a piggly that. wiggly man. paper, and you had to roll it up like you get ready to barbecue, go to the <laughs> stove and get a light. <laughs> wait, <laughs> that's them gas, yeah. That's them gas, that's them gas. And when you ain't got yeah, and when you ain't got no gas in the tank, you gotta get them kerosene really? heaters yeah. that's down at the end of the hallway. Y'all ain't never catch no roach and put it in the heater. <laughs> A butterfly or something like that. Now, I ain't catching no damn one. Yeah. Watch that bitch break down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I catch some with it. You know the wings that be on the light or something. I ain't catching no damn roach. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, that's old school, that man. 
being raised by your grandma. That's, that's one thing yeah. we have in common, man. We got, we got to have them grandma. Hey, grandma, man. man. Yeah. You're going to take you in. You're going you to, hey. My grandma used to go grocery shopping every day. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> no reason. <laughs> you didn't get what you need yesterday, grandma? But it's just here. <laughs> <laughs> we back in here again. She treated like it's really the market. I'm, I'm, <laughs> and she go to three stores. Y'all generation probably had more money, but uh, we didn't get to get Frosted Flakes and Lucky Charms. We had to just get the corn flakes. We had to put the sugar on there. Then all the sugar would go to the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Now and we you get that little, you get that little methamphetamine at the bottom, <laughs> that little whip up. <laughs> we were able That'd to be the part shit. you. <laughs> but you can't wait to eat the cereal to get to that shit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> my dad still like getting the free shit. We'll still get the shit that we can buy, but he just ain't passing up no free shit. Right. Like he was standing in line, embarrassing as hell. And, and still get that shit. He Dang. Free food. Ain't nothing like being fucked up, bro. We ate the, I remember eating the most racist cereal I ever seen. It was, you know, like Cocoa Puffs come in the box with Sunny on that bitch. Then we had a bag of Cocoa something with two monkeys on that motherfucker. <laughs> it was in a dog food bag. Oh, yeah, that's the cheap Was it free? Once you open that shit, you got to eat all of it because yeah. it don't okay. have no shelf life. Yeah. Oh, they're like that pig fire meat. That bag of fear. They're like that pig fire meat. You broke when your grandma come back, come home with a bag of Kaboom. Kaboom. Hey, I ain't going to the clowns. Hey, I didn't know. I like Kaboom. You know I thought the Man. shit was, First of all, it turned the milk navy blue. Right. That should let you know it's a goddamn problem yeah, right there. This so shit can't be good for you. <laughs> I thought the shit was good. I said, it's got marshmallows. Yeah. Yeah, that's that cheap and, cereal. And it bro. got. Oh, this is the, this the, the other one that fucked me up. I swear this had something to do with the government and the crack conspiracy. King Vitamin. Who oh, the yeah. fuck was King Vitamin? Yeah. yeah. It was just an old white man on there, like, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, 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 wasn't, was, it wasn't even sweet for real, like Captain Crunch, uh -huh. but it tied the roof of your mouth up. Yeah. He was like Captain Crunch if he never went to the army. Right. If he never got no stripes. <laughs> so he didn't make he wasn't quite a count. Now he was just a prime. He wasn't no king. He was just he was a, a nigga in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mixed between him and Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> yup. Mr. Wizard was a weird motherfucker too. Just had a whole bunch of white kids doing science experiments and shit. Yeah. Mr. Rogers was creepy too. But you used to watch it though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mr. Rogers. He made them white people mad because he was all about that integration. Yeah. He had that black male man on there washing his feet. Oh, yeah. That started. That was yeah, they stuck their foot in the same bowl together or some shit. Yeah, yeah. They, they cooled off in the thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. But also, Mr. Rogers, you, you would expect him to have done something freaky. But I think the freakiest thing he did, they used to say he used to swim naked every morning. He that said was that? It. Yeah. But he would, it wouldn't nobody be in the pool. It was just him. Right. <laughs> so that's the freakiest shit they said he did. His right? own pool? Yeah, oh, that's I'm, nothing compared to what's going on now. That's what I'm saying. Usually when a motherfucker... Way ahead of the game. Yeah. God. He was just popping it off. <laughs> God. No, man, I'm, I'm honored, man, to be here, You know here, where man. we at. You got to pull up. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm, I'll come back any time. All right, bet. We got I sit over there and laugh, man. I, I just want to, you know, I just want to hang. At this age, I just want to hang out and have a good time. We got some more shows. He got shows about Cologne. Yup, my sentiments. Yeah, we got shows around here, man. <clears throat> yeah, we shooting out Clayton Street. I'll come do all y'all shows. Yeah, yeah sound yeah. stage That's set up. Really yeah, cool. I don't ever know where you here. I, I, I'm, I'm in Birmingham, bro. I come here. I came here just man. Yeah, I did. You been to our Alabama game this year? I want to. I no, think I'm going Saturday. Saturday. You know, we play Georgia this, this Saturday. Okay. You play right. Georgia, all y'all Georgia fans. I ain't, who is y'all from Mississippi? Oh, Mississippi <laughs> State or Ole Miss? Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Okay, okay. Ole Miss. I'm from Oxford. You got, you got Georgia, right? Uh, he went to community ain't. college. He don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My family from Pensacola, but I ain't really no UGA fan, but I'm you here. Family, don't smack me. Oh, you went to fam? I went to fam. I went to fam, yeah. Oh, my oh, dad, I was Alabama. Alabama. Okay, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. 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 Trumpet, you know, I'm Mars Trump. Come on, man. I ain't Mars nothing. I yeah. wasn't finna be out there in the band, man. <laughs> I wasn't finna be in the hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, you you Mars your fam. That's like pledging. Yeah, no, they he ain't they, in the band. Yeah. You just a nigga on campus. Right. Hollering after little hoes and shit. <laughs> hey man, I was you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man. First year was cool. Show. You stupid. Keep smiling, we out of here. Y'all be easy. Oh gee. It's your man Carlos Miller, and I'm over here at the 85 South. Studios, 85 Ways. And look, if you would like to be featured on the black market, all you have to do is go to the website, go to black market, click submit, 
and submit. If you want to be featured on here, you can come kick it and be my guest, and we'll talk about your business and how we can scale up and what's going good and let the people know exactly what you got going on. Hit the website, register, submit, and come kick it with me on the black market. You know what that means. It's money on the floor. Hey, what's up, man? Carlos Miller. Look, you know the 85 South Shore is back on tour with the Big Business Tour. This year, we're hitting the road and we're bringing comedy, culture, and chaos to cities all across the country. And we want you to be a part of it. We're looking for partners in every city, whether you're a local business or a national brand. This is your chance to get in on the action. Don't miss the opportunity to sponsor a show and connect with our incredible audience. If you're interested, just hit the email on the screen and let's make big business happen together. The 85 South Show Big Business Tour is coming to a city near you.